This is Brian Putt. I was re reviewing an article about value of risk and conditional value at risk. And I found it very confusing. I looked on YouTube and there were lots of YouTube videos about it, but none of them that kind of looked at it graphically. So decision makers really need to understand the metrics presented to take action. If they don't understand the metrics and it's voodoo to them, they're not going to take action. And the whole purpose of the study is to, to take some sort of action. Uh, decision makers understand better with graphics than numbers. Many of them do. Uh, sometimes finance people are better with tables than numbers, but most decision makers may not come from the finance side. They come from uh, applications, this, uh, more business oriented, where graphics are utilized. So, what do VAR and CVAR? mean graphically. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about definitions first. VAR, value at risk, is the worst case loss associated with a probability and a time horizon. It is the maximum loss that an investment portfolio or a company uh, may suffer within a given time frame with a certain level of confidence. Mm. And then the conditional value of risk is the expected that expected loss if that worst case scenario is ever crossed. It quantifies the expected losses that occur beyond the VAR breakpoint. Well, clearly that's understandable. No, not really. So let's go deeper. Let's think about a case where there's a, we want to calculate a value of risk, which can be measured in per dollars or in other metrics, whatever that might be. And let's assume we're going to measure it in dollars and we have a VAR of $5 million. And a chance of an event is 60%. The loss function, if an event occurs, is a long tail. So if an event occurs, Let's assume that this is the loss function. It's a really a kind of a log normal sort of thing. Uh, and so you can see it's got a big, big long tail. You can think of this as an earthquake or, or something that along those lines. Okay. And then we have the chance of an event. So here's that same curve I showed you. But when you include the 60% chance of the event, there's a 40% chance that it doesn't happen. So there's no loss. So here's the 40% that there's no loss, and here's the 60% that there is a loss. So this, the shape of this curve matches this, but it's been scaled down to 60%. So now that we have this total cost curve, here's that 40%, then nothing happens. Let's blow this chart up and just look at the zero to 50. We don't need this long tail. We know what that looks like. So here's the new curve blown up zero to 50. Now we said we had a bar of five. So here's the bar of five. And you can see that the total cost curve, there's really only about a 30% chance that I'm gonna exceed the bar when I consider the 40% chance of nothing happening. So here's that chart again. And now what is the conditional value of risk? The conditional value of risk is that the expected value of all this over here, which is shown to be 21. If I come out here to 21, this area here is equal to that really long tail and adding up all those areas, right? And we can see that this distribution of the C-bar with the expected value of 21 starts at five because our value at risk is five. One more point I want to make. I guess it's, I need to make a problem from here is there's two ways to think about the VAR. One way is to pick a number. In other words, I don't want to lose more than $5 million. Or I could say, 
I don't want to lose more than 30% of the time. I don't want to be over my bar more than 30% of the time. And that would lead to five. Or I could say 80% of the time. And then I'd be looking at a bar of, you know, closer to 10, right? So there's two ways to think about it from a decision maker perspective. Do I want to think about percentiles or quantiles or chances of being exceeding my VAR? Or do I want to pick a, a, a value for my VAR, whether it be dollars or something else? So how does the decision maker make a decision? Well, as I've already said, they can specify a VAR and read the chance and see VAR from this graph. So let's say if they had the VAR of 20, that means the, the C VAR would be kind of like a 50. And also at that VAR of 20, the probability of incurring that expected value, this is an expected value here, is only roughly 10%. On the other hand, I could specify a chance of exceeding, in which case I need to come back to this chart and my 10% would be here. And once again, I come up with my like my 19, right? And at 19, I also have a CVAR of close to 50 and a chance of recurring that only 10% of the time. Anyway, that's the idea. Now, whether this is useful or not, I don't know. But when you read about it, you need to understand what it's trying to tell you. And you can decide whether this is the way you want to think about uncertainty in your business, or whether there's better ways to, to think about it in terms of uh, a capital efficiency chart, which is covered in my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, you can contact me at brian at the um, You can review this video again for a better understanding. You can request a copy of the Excel model that generated the graphics. And you can change uh, the input variables to have a better understanding as well. And you can learn more about simulation on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.